what growth do you expect in the chemical engineering industry in the next 10 to 15 years right now indian chemical industry is actually if i'm not wrong the sixth largest in the world and it's actually third in asia and mm-hmm. it is ex- grow at a rate of around uh, 13 to 14% in the next 5 years and more importantly by 2025 the projections again if i'm not wrong is somewhere around the size of the indian chemical industry market somewhere around 304 billion dollars this is one of the sectors in india which government allows 100% fdi and if you look at the entire manufacturing gdp the chemical manufacturing sector chemical manufacturing sector right now occupies about 16 percent of the total share but by the time it actually has a 300 plus billion dollar size it would be one quarter of the entire gdp manufacturing gdp so if you're looking at a post covid scenario and of course there were other factors as well because last year what happened 2019 march there was a big explosion in the jiangsu province in china which actually led to the closure of a lot of chemical plants. This is where also a big impetus was gained by the chemical industries in India. That is why we are looking at a very bright scenario, at least in the next half a decade. So the Indian chemical manufacturing scenario is supposed to be extremely, extremely good in the next half a decade. What kind of career paths to people generally follow after studying chemical engineering at Bitscore? Like what kind of jobs do they choose to do? And uh, if they go into research, like what kind of careers do they have there? Generally in India, you do have good players in the market for which you can work as an engineer, as a fresh graduate engineer. So uh, basically you can have good couple of good companies who are making specialty chemicals. Like say, for example, it can be Gujarat Fluorochemicals, it can be RT Industries, it can be Gujarat Heavy Chemicals, it can be Tata Chemicals, it can be Pidilite. These are the kind of uh, Indian companies who are manufacturing in India since the last 8, 40, 50, 60 years, very old companies. Of course, after that is the conventional companies where uh, MNCs or other uh, glorified and glamorous sector and companies like Shell, Chevron, Hindustan Unilever, you can also have Sabic Plastics, which was previously GE Plastics, you can have Saint Gobain, you can have Reliance and other things. The other career path which people do take from my experience is going for the PSUs. So you have ONGC, you have PPCL, HPCL, Gale. You can also find jobs in ISRO and others in the TRTO sectors. There are very few specifically uh, designed openings at times you find in companies like Mercedes-Benz R&D or even uh, you can talk about Samsung R&D which does recruit or G appliances, G energy. Previously it was uh, one of course one of the companies was G water which is I don't think it's right now operating. Also the path I would not say it's a shortcut people do take is an MBA after the B. So B and then you end up with an MBA and then you work for some uh, data analytics company. Uh, that does not apply to specifically to chemical engineering that right. anybody can. Right. So these are the career paths that people do take. Uh, and for chemical engineers, apart from the MBA part, the other ones that I mentioned before are, def- are definitely open. Yeah. Okay. How are our facilities for chemical engineering, especially for those who would be interested in research in this field? Uh, it's it's good. I would say it's pretty good. It's pretty good in the sense um, we in bits in bits system, and I'm talking about Goa campus as well. Specifically, also I can talk about Goa campus because I belong here. We have a very uh, well distributed faculty strength. We have a close-knit group of 14 faculties working in, in very good areas. State-of-the-art research we do. There was a lot of data analysis that went on. And we actually saw some of our matrix, like for example, citations for faculty, citations for paper. Those numbers were actually very much comparable to the institutes like ISC Bangalore and IIT Bombay. 
and much better than few of the older ideas. So the mantra is basically what we adopt, at least in bits, is publish less, but publish good, good papers, and have a consistent approach. At least in Goa Chemical Engine Department, I can say that we encourage a lot of first degree students to do research. Again, so much so that we are one of the few departments who publish very consistently with first degree students. And there's a proven track record of conference publications, journal publications, journal publications getting awards recognized as a national level for, uh, for first degree students. And of course, the first degree students do end up benefiting from such experiences because when you are definitely applying for um, MS or a PhD abroad, MS or a PhD abroad, these things uh, do uh, add up to your CV. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, we are we are having good infrastructure as of now. We are trying to grow as much as possible. I think we will be on a very strong platform in the next couple of years. Uh, we have good state-of-the-art labs. We have good uh, process engineering technology lab. We have good material synthesis group. They do good work on material synthesis. Uh, we have a good group on environmental uh, engineering. And all the first degree students as a part of their LOP, SOP, DOP, whatever, engagements you are in they get an exposure to all these facilities at one point of the time of year so uh, from my perspective i would say that chemical engineering department do have we do have good facilities in your opinion what are the subject and topic areas most extensively covered in the chemical engineering degree and what 11 12th grade topics would be of importance uh, chemical engineering curriculum, whatever is taught, uh, the first degree year where you're taught about fundamentals and basic basic uh, um, uh, subjects, apart from all these, the pillars of chemical engineering curriculum are fluid mechanics, heat transfer, thermodynamics, kinetics, mass transfer. These are the five uh, fundamental pillars that make up chemical engineering curriculum. And why are these five there? Because as a chemical engineer, if you're trying to synthesize or manufacture, suppose a specialty chemical, like say, for example, you're trying to make polysulfate. Okay. How do you design the reactor? You are trying to churn a particular system, trying to churn a lot of reactants coming in inside a reactor, and you try to churn it, and then you're trying to measure if there are any temperature rises. And so there's a very complex interplay between fluid it then you have mass transfer the overall feasibility of the processes is determined by thermodynamics how fast is the process going is determined by kinetics so these are the four subjects that form the fundamental chemical engineering curriculum now if you're talking about if you are talking about say uh, how to bridge what you are studying in chemical engineering with what you have studied in your class 12, there are only two subjects that you, I think one needs to understand. One is definitely a bit of mathematics. Uh, the second one is definitely chemistry. Because chemical reactions is one thing that you have to uh, definitely understand. Uh, otherwise, designing such systems, designing reactors, or understanding certain processes becomes difficult. So chemistry and mathematics, a little bit of physics always plays a part, but these two are the most important subjects. That's how you bridge the gap between 12th and what you will study in the next three, four years. What advice do you have for the uh, incoming batch of BITS Goa students who are currently probably preparing for BITS at? There are a lot of opinions and I will not uh, raise any controversy by advocating one of those opinions. I leave it to the people who are studying or are pursuing their curriculum in BITS. I'll not talk about CGPS, I'll not talk about attendance. I'll not talk about uh, conventional thinking that, uh, you know, raise your, uh, you should have a particular CG, you should have a particular career, you should have a particular company. I would suggest all the incoming people to be good engineers. So what that means is being a good engineer would basically mean being disciplined, 
So that means if you're a good working engineer, because I have worked in an industry, from my experience, I can say that being a good engineer basically means you need good discipline. It's like bodybuilding. So if somebody goes to the gym and is trying to work on his body, he will eat, he will sleep, he will work out. He will eat, he will sleep, he will work out. And he does not have a break because that is, that is his lifestyle. It's very difficult, bodybuilding as a sport. Similarly, chemistry is, is engineering. You need a 24-7 involvement. You need to maintain good diary. You need to read. You need to keep yourself abreast of the market scenarios. What are the prices of oil? What are the prices of chemicals? What are the market demands? How are certain prices falling? So that means you're also keeping a tag on the share market and all these things. So that's discipline. Now, if that means you're attending all the classes, that's part of discipline. If you're saying that, okay, I'm going to maintain a 9.5 GPA, that's good discipline. I'm not advocating any of this. I'm just saying being good discipline. That is first attribute of a good engineer. Second, keep your senses open. So from the next time when you hang out with your friends and when you're drinking a cup of tea, you ask yourself the question, what is that cup made of? Who makes, who makes those cups? Who distributes those cups? How, what is the pricing? What is the price point of those cups when somebody actually buys it? And at what price point are they sold? When you are drinking a cup of coffee of five rupees, how much of the contribution is due to the cup alone? And how much does that particular person who's distributing the cups leave alone the person who's actually manufacturing make out of that particular five rupees that you are paying? Who makes those cups? What are the polymers that are used to make them? Are they imported from China? Are the cups imported from China? If so, why, why can't you make it in India? When you throw the cups away, where does it go? Who collects them? Uh, there was a good uh, TV series which we watched really recently. It's one of the best TV series called The Sopranos. But Tony Soprano was the, uh, was dealing with the garbage industry. It's a good industry. So you collect cups and you process it. You put it to the plant. And what happens to the plants? How do you incinerate it? What is the carbon efficiency or what is the carbon footprint of such plants? Can you reduce it? Can you do a good energy audit? So being a good engineer is discipline and definitely keeping your senses open. And the last attribute would be having good common sense. So I think these three are the most important attribute that you need to have if you are to be a good engineer, apart from what you are studying in the books or in the class. These three are the most important attribute. Keep your senses open, be disciplined, and have good common sense approach. Not get bogged down by challenges. And that's it.